아, 아. 아, 네, 저는 대전 MBC 구병권 기자로 합니다. Hello, uh, my name is 병권고 and a newsman of 대전 MBC. We we recorded your great talks and we fresh. Uh, we broadcast it on the MBC channel uh, on next Monday night p m 11. <웃음> is about the future of AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, when the when the AlphaGo beat uh, Mr. Lee, uh, some people were disappointed with, with, with that. Uh, maybe they think they worry they were worried about dystopia. Maybe maybe. So uh, this is my question. What the uh, what does the uh, game result signify for our future? Um. You know, I, I think uh, these are kind of um, sort of science fiction scenarios, uh, not very helpful. I think that, you know, um, actually the way we see AI is as a tool um, that we can use to automate some tasks that, uh, you know, are, are very boring to do or um, quite hard for humans to do. So I think uh, this is the sort of way that we're thinking about building AI. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, I think this, this match just shows that um, some of the capabilities of the systems that we're building um, could be very general and could be very useful in some very interesting ways. Um, you know, as I said in my talk, I think we're a long way away from any of these kinds of, you know, human level general intelligence. We're still just playing games uh, and games are relatively constrained. Even Go uh, is a perfect information game. and. Um, is, is, is not messy like the real world is. So, um, you know, we have a very, very long way to go and there are many things that we need to solve before we get close to the kind of general intelligence. Uh, all those things I listed on the neuroscience uh, slide uh, haven't been done yet. So please. Uh, hi, my name is Vinda Choi. I'm a PhD student at the Chemical Engineering. First of all, thank you for your mesmerizing talk, and of course, congratulations on your 2-0 win over your book. All the media coverage deals with you and your success at DeepMind, but I'm really interested, I think the students are all interested in hearing how you overcame the hardships that you, uh, when you first found DeepMind, before you shook hands with Google, hmm. that's my first question. And second, the media coverage all tells that you have made all the right decisions, that you right. made all the sp spectacular movements throughout your career. But based on your self-evaluation, what would you th say that you did wrong? Yeah. What have you done wrong? <laughs> if you could go back in time and choose a different path or do something differently, what would you do? Yeah. And finally, after the talk is over, you know, if I was wondering if I could take like a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Uh, good questions. Um, so yeah. So of course, once you once you get to here, things um, seem like you know from the outside that it's been very smooth. Of course, as we all know, um, things are never like that, uh, and it's been a very long uh, process for me, and and you know struggle in some ways to get to this point, which uh, you know is where I was always trying to get to. So. Um, you know, when we started DeepMind, we were a very small company in London, uh, 2010. We st I started it with uh, a couple of friends of mine. One was a postdoc with me at UCL. And uh, it was quite hard raising the initial seed money um, because back in 2009, uh, AI was not like it is now, which is huge, um, uh, 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 you know, hugely fashionable and everyone's talking about it and it's working really well. Uh, back then, it was still nobody was talking about AI, and uh, deep learning hardly anyone knew about that. Uh, it was, you know, the papers had come out, but no one was using it. Um, so we made these kind of quite bold bets on deep learning, reinforcement learning, these kinds of things, this grounded cognition, these ideas that we've been building up uh, for 20 years as the right way to build AI. Um, but it was very difficult to get that initial money. Um, people were very skeptical because they wanted products and things like that, and we were doing pure research. Um, so, but we felt that a company would be faster than doing it in academia. That's what we felt for something like this. Um, so we persevered, and uh, we were lucky we found some uh, big backers from Silicon Valley. Um, that was hard because I didn't know any, I'm from the UK, so I didn't know that world. Uh, so that was very, you know, I had to learn how to, how to do that. 
So, um, so there were lots of troubles on the way, as you can imagine. Um, but uh, you know, and even joining Google was a big decision. Um, but it's worked out amazingly well for us, and they've been great as a partner, and, and we've actually accelerated things very fast. Um, as to your other question about uh, mistakes, of course, there's so, so many mistakes. Um, but um, you know, I, I think um, you know it's hard to. I make you know on a kind of micro level, there's always lots of mistakes. But um, probably they wouldn't make sense to you. They wouldn't be useful, transferable if I told you what those were. But on the macro level, I think overall, um, think I've been pretty consistent, and uh, I chose the things that would eventually try. I hope would get me to this position. So I think that I, all I would say as a piece of advice, if that's what you're looking for, is to um, come up with a really. Uh, it's all sort of like using chess skills, right? Um, come up with a really concrete plan. Imagine where you want to be, and and really, uh, really, really think hard about working back from that what you would need to do and then start doing that today and carry on relentlessly doing that even though things are getting in the way just don't let it and uh, eventually you'll get there that's what i would say Thanks. thank you i'm a student at the department of bio and brain engineering my name is Yoon kim and i actually have two questions first yesterday during the game AlphaGo made a move that wouldn't be played by a professional player and the commentators were wondering why it made that move. Mm. But after that first game, mm. um, they were they probably would have thought it was a mistake, but after that first game they started thinking that it was all a plan moving, they got scared. Yeah. So I was wondering if there's any chance for AlphaGo to have made any mistake mm. or it was all a plan move and they actually should have been scared about it. Yeah. And for um, as as AI gets more and more advanced, um, I think people will tr start to get to start to depend on it more and more. Um, do you think that uh, it is right for us to actually believe it all the way and um, choose to you know not make our own decisions? Or I just I just want to hear your views on that. So, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for your question. So so um, let me just address the the, the go question first. And uh, so I think you're talking about the, the, the shoulder hit on move 37, right? Yes, so yeah. I think it's a really amazing move. And um, so I, I'm not strong enough to know, as I said, but I asked Fan Hui about this move. And of course, I could see the reactions of Lisa Dole himself. And also, I, I read afterwards about all the reactions of the different professionals. Like, you know, some were laughing at the moves, ridiculous, and others were kind of amazed. Uh, but I think Fan Hui described it to me uh, in a really good way. He said, uh, for the first minute, he thought this was ridiculous and AlphaGo had made a uh, terrible mistake. Then he thought for 10 minutes, then he starts thinking maybe there's something there. And then he thought for another 10 minutes and he thought maybe this is an amazing move. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened, and I think uh, once we found out that you know it played over here to then have effect on the group on the other side of the board, it's pretty amazing to see. I mean, I think that's the sort of play that computers are supposed to be terrible at, and why Go is considered to be so hard and uh, a form of art because of this kind of play. So uh, afterwards, maybe I can say one of my other anecdote. Michael Redman, I talked to him, who was commentating on the English channel Nine Down Pro. I asked him about this move and he said to me the style of AlphaGo uh, is very light touch and uh, it likes influence and power in the center and he said all the top well certainly he would love to play like that but it's very hard to play like that and make it uh, actually yield results so uh, it was very interesting hearing these kinds of things um, so your second question was about AI and relying on it I mean I think you know, it's the same with all technology. We are quite reliant on the internet and email and your smartphone. And, you know, I think if you use these things correctly, they help us, right? But if you use them incorrectly and you waste your time on them, then already technology <laughs> can be uh, uh, actually harming. So I really think, again, with AI, it's like, we should, of course, we should stay in the decision-making loop and we should use AI to help um, improve us. So when I talk about AI-assisted AI science, what I'm thinking is that you have AIs that are like research assistants that help, uh, 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 help you uh, analyze data, that surface that to you, and then you do the insights and decide like what experiments should be done, these kinds of things. So as a tool uh, and an aid. 